Everyone, I'd like to uh, call our uh, Standing Committee on Natural Resources and Environmental Sustainability to order. Um, everybody sees the agenda in front of us. Uh, can we have a, an approval for the agenda or any, any uh, additions to the agenda? Everybody's good. Approved, uh, moved by Hilton. Okay. Okay, just as I like to always start off with the Standing Committee of Natural Resources and Environmental State Sustainability is charged with matters concerning agriculture, fisheries, land, water, forest, wildlife, energy, natural resources, environment, climate change, and other such matters relating to natural resources and environmental sustainability. Uh, today's uh, agenda, there was a couple of issues, I guess. One was to try to develop a little bit of a work plan on a piece of legislation that was uh, uh, tabled in the legislature and referred to our, our committee uh, to uh, review and see what we can do to improve or strengthen that particular piece of legislation, which is an act to amend the Farm Machinery Dealers and Vendors Act. And uh, we also just to uh, uh, continue on with the existing business that our committee has had or, or unfinished business that we, uh, from our last uh, session and report, so, uh, so that we have some issues around that and, uh, and the other things we'd like to add on. So that's basically the agenda. <coughs> I want to uh, acknowledge that uh, Zach Bell is uh, standing in for Brad Trivers uh, on the committee here today as a substitute. And uh, we have Al Perry, Carla Bernard, Peter Bevan Baker, Hilton McLennan, and Susie Dillon as regular members of the committee. So on our first uh, item on the agenda then is uh, the... Uh, Act to amend the Farm Machinery Dealers and Vendors Act. So, Zach Bell. Chair, is this the that you would have brought forward in the fall legislature? That's is that what that's referring to? That's correct. Yeah. That, uh, as you recall, in the legislature, uh, we uh, took this to uh, uh, committee of the whole, and uh, after some debate on the subject uh, and uh, some a briefing of what the intent of the bill was, uh, was the wishes of the legislature to uh, refer it to a standing committee. Okay. So this being the, I guess, the most appropriate one based on the fact that it has pertains a lot to agriculture makes some sense. Um, <clears throat> so now we've got to decide as a committee what do we want to do as far as uh, trying to look at the bill, see what we can do to maybe get some feedback on the bill. Uh, I know Hilton and I have had some conversations on the bill uh, just at the Rink and Time Valley, I believe. So, uh, yeah. so uh, you know, we kind of have a sense of uh, different things on this, but it's just a matter of what the committee's thoughts would be <coughs> on the on the particular bill. So, I'll say I'll open it up to any questions or uh, clarifications that we might want to have, and then I would assume one of our uh, items on the agenda would be then to maybe get some people to come in and present on their points of view, because like any particular subject or any bill that uh, may try to protect one organization, it may have an impact on another. So if I was to say that farmers, it might uh, be more supportive, but our farm machinery dealers may not, <laughs> not be quite as supportive. So, so uh, it's uh, really about trying to uh, get the information back from those particular groups and uh, see what we can do to, uh, once again, strengthen the le legislation and then bring it well, depending on what the, if the champion of the bill, which I guess was m me in that case, uh, wants to bring it back for a debate and where it goes from there, that's up to the legislature. So. Okay, Peter Beffenbecker. Uh, thanks, Chair. I appreciate your introduction and uh, sort of setting the context for this. And this is an issue I've been really interested in and uh, for many years brought forward a motion here in the House three years ago, I think. Um, and I really appreciated your bill because it opens up that conversation again and we see there's bills C244 at the federal yeah, level yeah, which yeah. is sort of setting the foundation or the groundwork for the possibility because there's nowhere in Canada where the, this sort of legislation actually exists at a provincial level. But Ontario and Quebec, at least when I did my motion, I spoke to MLAs and or uh, MPPs in one case. Uh, about the work they were doing to bring forward right to repair legislation there. Very interesting, and there are all kinds of places around the world where this legislation is in place. Mm -hmm. uh, Europe is perhaps the, 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 the leading area. So I'm very much in favor of finding out more about this, really at this point on PEI, to uh, inform uh, legislators about what this actually means and what the implications are, and I think yeah. you gave a very good description of that, Chair. 
So I would be very much interested in bringing in some folks to talk about this. I, could, I have some suggestions about who we could bring in. Um, but I, I, that's my contribution is, yep, this is a great idea. We need, to, at this point, to have a, a broader discussion. Thanks, okay. Chair. Okay. Anybody else want to uh, weigh in on thoughts on, on this particular piece of legislation or tasks that are in front of us? Um, okay. Yeah, that, I'm fine with the, uh, you know, I don't know, again, I'm, I'd be curious to hear who the who Peter has suggested. But, yeah, on the same boat, it doesn't hurt to look into it. And, yeah, I, I'll, I'll add in a little bit too, so not to totally share a conversation that Hilton and I had at the rink in Time Valley. We had a, we had a chat with a farmer uh, and uh, who is also a repairs farm machinery or has a license, or I don't know if a license, but anyway, a mechanic in uh, farm machinery repair, farm technician. And, uh, you know, he start, felt that there certainly are issues around, you know, accessing information like it's I know it can sound very simple just in getting a manual a repair manual but it's also now that the technical parts of codes and uh, the electronic components of uh, of information to repair is sometimes not as easy to access and uh, although I don't think anybody is throwing any uh, farm dealers under the bus and by any regards to saying that they're not providing that information at the moment I would say that uh, in any case you want to be proactive in that with what happens if it does become that because I think that's where parts of why legislation has been uh, put in place in Europe and other places where that wasn't as easy to access, right? So so I know some things that my thoughts and so that was just one person that we talked with. But I also had a, a good conversation with a fairly large farm in my district uh, Triple uh, S Farms and one of the farmers there, and they were they had mentioned that there's a number of factors that are coming into play when it comes into uh, say there's something that goes a bit wrong when you're in in the process of a harvest and you say you lose your GPS signals or you can't uh, the, there's a malfunction in the machines. It has a significant impact on whether they can get their harvest done right, and and it's not a case where. Things do break, we can't prevent that, but it's about how do you quickly get the information to repair it. They were held up for a, basically a day until they got the repair company to come in and give them the information to get the repairs done. So that, that's what I'm trying to get at. It, it, it's where does it kind of lead. And another, uh, so uh, you know, I think there are some farms out there that we may be able to suggest and we'll try to see if Alicia can uh, look at trying to get them to come in and maybe give, give us a better insight so we all as a committee hear that. And one other uh, group that I think that we should look at possibly uh, bringing in is the Farm Practices Review Board. Because so I think it has a, they have maybe some implications on what can and can't be done and what's appropriate uh, to do. So that might be another group that we can think about, uh, you know, getting the chair or that committee in to uh, give us some feedback on are, are there things that they can do to make sure that this legislation is implemented properly, you know, so it's something that they could be the overseer of the, instead of an individual or a department, so that, you know, it's supposed to be an independent group that protects farmers and making sure that they can farm uh, appropriately uh, to general farm practices. So that's just those, some suggestions that I have. So, Peter, you would, so you'd mentioned there's some, maybe some people that you think that you would like to uh, suggest or organizations that you think that might be appropriate to give us some feedback and information? Sure. I, I, mean, I, <clears throat> I was incorrect. I said that no province has uh, actually passed legislation. This fall, I was just looking this up, actually, the, the um, contact I had in Quebec, that bill went through in October of this year, so okay. it received royal assent in October 2023, so my apologies for, for that. So one province has gone forward with this. So um, I think the, it was the Minister of Justice in Quebec who, who brought forward that bill. So okay. I, I think uh, Simon Jolin Barret, I think, is the name of the Minister of Justice there. Um, whether they personally or uh, folks from that department will be able to come, what, what will be interesting, I think, because that province is has yeah. managed to bring forward and pass a piece of legislation. I don't remember the name of my contact in Ontario, but I can certainly find that out and pass it on to Alicia. Um, and who, whichever department is behind Bill C-244, the, the federal bill, um, s civil servants from that department would be very useful as well, I yeah. think, to come in. On the other hand, and you mentioned this, Chair, again, very fairly, um, this will impact certain sectors of the economy, and I think um, 
folks who who service farm equipment. Your your bill is specifically on farm equipment. Mm -hmm. The right to repair can oh, stretch yeah, to everything yeah, from yeah. cell phones to refrigerators to John Deere tractors, yeah. whatever. Um, but because of the specificity of your bill, I think it would be fair and useful to get the some of the farm repair folks here on PEI, yeah. and there are many of them. Uh, if they have an organization, association, a rep from that, or perhaps just uh, one particular dealership, I don't know. I'd start with that. Yeah. Uh, another one to think about, too, is the Federation of Agriculture. I know I had consulted them on my particular piece of legislation, but, you know, that, that was just their feedback to me. So, you know, maybe that's another organization that could... Uh, Possibly weigh in. It could be at least a letter too from them. It doesn't, you know. All of these will have to kind of figure that out. Uh, what's the ones? So, does anybody else have any suggestions of any? Hilton. Well, like well, we were talking, the, <clears throat> I think it may uh, maybe the size of the farm might have an impact. But more so, yeah. For sure. you, you know, um, because if you're looking at um, um, say a big potato farm that has a mechanic under their salary, um, if they had the information, they could do it a lot quicker. Um, if we had one or two farmer, maybe, you know, uh, come in and speak on that. And I wonder about like a mid-size or just an opinion of a mid-size farmer or small farmer, whether it would make any difference to them or not. Mm -hmm. It might on um, mechanical stuff, but, mm. I know, you we, know. We, you and I, we talked a little bit too. Like to one of them, yeah. One of the farmers, and he is, does repairs and things. Do you think he would ever do one? Uh, would well, we'd have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, he's, I know he's a neighbor. And he's yours. a former mechanic. He, he, yeah, worked, he yeah. worked in oh, I thought he'd be a good machine person. dealer. Uh, he worked for a machine dealer before. Yeah. So, but he doesn't now, so he's on, his, yeah. on the farm. So he might give some insight of whether, um, whether, it, can, whether it is an advantage or not. Mm. Uh, to and the, I would consider them. Pro they're probably a midsize. You know, yeah, I don't. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And the repair or that yeah. side. Okay. Okay. Uh, hearing that, we so now let's start to get into more specifics. Then, so we've we've talked about farm practices review board. We talked about some specific farms, larger and small. We talked about dealers, the Federation of Agriculture. Uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, the. Quebec, I don't know who would be the exact person. Would be would we be dealing with the Department of Justice in this, or would we look at maybe contacting the, say, the Federation of Agriculture in Quebec, or what would be the, like, who, who, how specific do we get when we think about feedback from a province right. that has already? Because we can bring them in online, do a, right. you know, a visual presentation as an example, versus them coming all the way here to present to For us. Sure. You know. For sure. <laughs> Uh, Chair, I think in the Peter case Bradley. of the Quebec bill, because it's just so recently passed, it was only a couple of months ago, that I'm not sure the impact, particularly in agriculture, because of course we're not in growing season now, I'm not sure if that would have been felt yet. So I, I'm wondering whether getting the sponsor of the bill, the Minister of Justice, or somebody from that department right. then would make more sense. Okay. Point. I have found the name of the uh, Ontario MPP who brought it forward, uh, and it was Brian May, private member's bill. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's an MP, not an MPP. My apologies. You know what, Alicia, I'll have to look back through my notes a little more carefully than I clearly have. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's maybe see if we can come up with, uh, say, a half a dozen uh, people or organizations to contact here and get more specific. Can we do that? Um, so I'm going to suggest in the... On, one of the farmers or, that I had spoken with was Triple S Farms. And uh, Triple S Farms, and uh, the, the farmer I was talking to was Wayne, who is sort of the mechanic there. He's one of the, the owners, but uh, he didn't feel he, would, he had the, uh, the gift of being able to come and present or speak on, on a subject, but he suggested his brother, who is the, one of the uh, shareholders of the farm as well, and that's Carl Smallman. So, uh, Maybe he would be one to uh, get from that side of it. Okay, maybe we can, in Hilton, in your case, do you want to suggest the, your neighbor? <laughs> you well, I, I could. We, we'll ask him anyway, Andrew okay, so, Maynard. So that would be uh, Port Hill Farms. Yes. And uh, that's Andrew Maynard. Mm -hmm. So once again, just be your responsibility to give him a call and suggest that the committee has suggested their name. 
would they like to uh, come? And I, I'll, I'll even throw out another one. I wonder about uh, Farm Boys would be another example. Uh, um, you know, Kyle and <laughs> Brian. Brian, you know, might be uh, another farm. I mean, they're on the larger side of the equation, yeah. more like if Triple S doesn't, maybe they do, or maybe both of them come together. It's yeah. another suggestion. Anybody else have a farm that they'd like to suggest? <laughs> yeah, okay. No, you know, no constituents and no big farms there. Okay, uh, so if we get into the dealers, uh, that was another, I think, we, you know, that's another group. I'm not aware of a particular farm dealers association, do you, Peter? I'm not, no. But I, I would suggest that the, the two of the larger ones that I'm aware of, anyway, would be uh, Kensington Agriculture, which is, deals a lot with uh, Warren and Holland, Ford, those kinds of, uh, and then you have Green Diamond, yep. which is uh, probably the largest one in the Atlantic Canada. Yep. I don't have a specific name per se. Does anybody suggest anybody that they know of? Uh, I think uh, Jeff Wood is uh, with Green Diamond in uh, Bloomfield and Summerside, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So maybe he would be a starting name. So mm -hmm. Jeff Wood. That's that would be uh, Kensington Agriculture. It's Trent Good. Trent. Okay, Electric, sorry. Trent Good. Yeah, there's I there's just one. Just know that they sell. Yeah. Is it Kubota the orange? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you get you get your colors down. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Susie. Um, anybody else got any other suggestions? So we've got three particular dealers to approach, and once again, you know, maybe it's a case of the three of them could come in together and it would be really helpful. But if uh, can't work something out, if we got one or two, at least that gives us some feedback on that side of the the issue. Um, the Federation of Agriculture was another, and I could suggest that's uh, Donald Killorn. Yep. So uh, um, he would be one to uh, contact to see if they'd either either in writing or uh, to do something uh, as a verbal presentation. And uh, the other one I had on there was the Farm Practices Review Board. I'm not sure who the chair of that is. You may know it's, it's appointed by government. Is that federal or is that provincial? No, provincial, yeah. yeah. So you got to get up in the farm issues there. So. But yeah, the, so the Farm Practice Review Board is appointed by the provincial government, and uh, for anybody that has complaints regarding agriculture, um, processes, techniques, uh, whatever the issue might be, they can take their complaint to the Farm Practices Review Board, and they will justify whether the farmer is complying with normal farm practices. So, okay. So, the, the, sorry, the, Chair. Yeah. Jack Bell. Just playing the devil's advocate, of course. Uh, is there anyone like through the department that would be beneficial to maybe point. weigh in on this as well? And, and again, <laughs> taking stealing your line, I do have to get a little bit more versed in the farming <laughs> you know, PEI, but yeah. I grew up a fisherman. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. Like, and sorry, I'm just trying to Google here myself in the agriculture department who might be someone who. You know, who would be someone to talk to? Yeah, I'd suggest probably even the deputy minister would be pretty knowledgeable Perfect. to represent. And they, once again, they would bring whoever. Yeah, exactly. Because I think there was some feedback from the, the PEI Department of Agriculture regarding the bill, is what uh, I, I gathered. So, so anyway, just so to, there was? Yeah, okay. yeah. But to wrap up, just on the Farm Practice Review Board, Dennis Hogan is the chair of that. Uh, for the farmers. Farm Practices Review Board. Okay. So, so maybe a letter can go to him. And so the PEI Department of Agriculture, do you start with the minister, the deputy minister, and see what if they have any feedback from that department's perspective that would be inappropriate? Yeah. And same thing, it could be in writing or it could be in, exactly, uh, yeah. in person presentation. And then we talked about uh, the legislators that uh, have, you think it's Quebec, right? So, uh, yep. so, uh, so the province of Quebec, if we could reach out to uh, the champion or the, of that particular sponsor of that particular bill, mm -hmm. Lisa. And I would suggest if they could just do an online presentation. So that's quite a, quite a bit for well, generally a small bill. <laughs> uh, but uh, any other suggestions? <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll ask Alicia to uh, draft up some letters, uh, find the actual contacts, draft up some letters uh, to uh, those individuals. Uh, I guess I'll say that yeah. her and I can kind of work with the wording of the, the letters. If there's anything specific you want to put in, I don't think, hopefully we don't have to get into forcing people to come to present. Well, I was just, just going to ask Chair if, uh, if 
we don't have very many farmers who want to come in. How do we, how are we going to go about maybe reaching out maybe to a few more, you know, or just could be just email suggestions or whatever. Yeah. Um, I guess that's one. Maybe when we touch with the Federation of Agriculture. They might. Be, I mean, yeah. obviously, they would represent all farmers yep. in general terms. Uh, but uh, if, uh, mm -hmm. you know, even, even on the onset of, asking them to uh, suggest some farmers that might want to come with them or yep. or to because uh, like i said we've identified a few but yeah we can't guarantee that they're gonna yeah. want to come i mean we, we can force them to come but that's not well, where we want to head on, on this particular piece of legislation <laughs> yeah so so anyway but so between yeah. Alicia and i will kind of draft something up and mm -hmm. uh i think it's pretty straightforward but uh let's go from there okay any other suggestions everybody in agreement to all of that we need a motion to do that? Or? Um, no, no general consensus. Is I, think, I think we have a general consensus on uh, where we're going with that. Okay, uh, number four on the so, agenda. Okay, so Zach Bell. All right, so are we going through the consideration of the work plan? Like you, it, that's next. Oh, that's number four. Or four, number four is review of correspondence, right? Yeah, but then after that, we'll talk a little more about the work plan. Okay, on. sounds good. Thank so you. We got, uh, we got uh, the uh, forestry nursery has asked us to has okay. provide yeah. some yeah. feedback. So. So in this part of review of correspondence, I guess. So anyway, so number four. Uh, so everybody's got a copy of this particular letter. Yep. Okay. Uh, so there was a letter came from Farm and Food Care Prince Edward Island to our standing committee. Um, in in a nutshell, I guess they're basically asking if we would uh, like to go out for a tour and meet with their organization and discuss some of the particular issues. Any feedback from that? <laughs> Everybody's kind of in agreement. They're suggesting dates of uh, 12th to 16th of February. Does that provide any inconvenience or problem to anybody? So maybe I will ask uh, Alicia to uh, kind of coordinate a, which one is a Thursday on, of those dates, do you know? The 15th. So possibly the 15th, just space to keep on our schedule mm -hmm. so everybody might make it a little more simpler, and if that doesn't work, I guess we'll mm. try to see if we can come up with another date. But uh, um, Alicia, do you want to? Yeah, go just on that note, um, with there only being five weeks for the planning week and already having a bit of a work plan for um, the bill that was referred, does the committee want um, all the letters to include the option for in lieu of presentation, a written submission, and then a deadline before the uh, we sit? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think I think in the end, as a, a committee, like I say, we've got a lot of things we're asking for here, but if we can kind of group them together, that's helpful. But uh, mm -hmm. if there's circumstances that uh, it's inconvenient for somebody to present in person, if uh, they provide us some feedback in writing, certainly gives us some mm -hmm. some sense of it, input from that, those organizations. Uh, we also uh, had uh, correspondence back from the PEI Provincial uh, Forestry Nursery. And uh, they, uh, I think it's something we had discussed before, but going out there for a tour. Um, just to clarify that. Okay. We haven't heard back. Um, we haven't sent the invitation yet necessarily. It was just something that was brought up oh. in the fall. Um, and I just wanted to see if it was still part of the committee's appetite um, for the either this um, next little bit um, over the five weeks or maybe sometime maybe in May. Um, it's up to the committee on when they kind of want to put that on the work plan to schedule it for. Um, but it was just brought up, and okay. I wanted to flag it. Okay, I stand a little bit corrected in that. <laughs> Susie? Sure. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, Alicia, is there anything else that uh, we have that... Uh, from feedback? Okay, Zach, do you have some issues around the, the work plan? That, no, 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 oh. no issues. Oh. Um, just, I, I didn't realize, sorry, I, maybe I was misunderstood, Chair. Like, are we suggesting different ideas for the work plan, or is the work plan kind of set with, uh, and uh, completely understanding that the referral of your uh, the bill, number 110, yeah. um, you know, had to be something that was discussed. If not, if they're, like, if the work plan is full, I'm fine with that, and I can bring this. Well, as Chair, I would look at the, you know, we're, we're open to any suggestions, mm -hmm. but we have a, you know, we do have a, because of that bill being referred to us, that sort of becomes our new priority. Yep, that's and, perfect. Uh, and then I guess we'd say from 
past uh, issues that we've discussed and worked on. We've still like the, the, the forestry nursery would be an example. Things were suggested and you know, we'll try to squeeze them in where, where possible as well. But uh, as a committee or as, as even a subsidy of, of a committee member, if you have an issue you want to bring up, now's your time. Okay. So you want to bring I'll, some? I'll just bring it up. It's just been brought to me. Um, and again, this can be just something that is added to the work plan. Yep. Um, and if it's looked at down the road, even perfect. Um, just, and again, I, I know it's more of a private practice thing, but uh, someone had asked on in our caucus if we would ever look at possibly having the PEI Dental Association presenting to this committee. Um, the backing of that would be basically the fact that, and the uh, honorable member across the floor would know this better than I would. With great intent. Um, <laughs> that in the near future there might be some, especially with our population growth, that there might be some shortages in dentists on PEI, and sometimes it might be a little bit harder to recruit, specifically to maybe more rural parts of the province. Um, and just to hear from the PEI Dental Association on maybe if they have any trials and tribulations of trying to recruit dentists here to the province, or if they see. This is again a conjecture of you know a member from our caucus who's hearing you know hearing it through his constituency that you know there might be the potential for shortages of dentists down the road and hmm. uh, well well as chair my first comment would be uh, not sure where it fits in this particular org uh, committee enough. member but but I mean you mentioned the word rural although we don't <laughs> specifically say rural I guess we do have a tenden tendency to perk up a little bit. I, I'm going to ask Peter Bevan Baker, do you have any oh. thoughts on that? Is, the, as, as, is oh, this a proper track? This is for this afternoon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, well I'm gonna, then. I'm going to be in for this afternoon. I was trying to be as polite as I could <laughs> here. And, and, uh, <laughs> here in New End here. But. Oh, thank you, Chair, for your indulgence. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Okay, so we'll maybe uh, suggest that you refer that to uh, the other committee on health. That would be <laughs> much be more great. appropriate. Yeah, uh, it, I know timing is hard to kind of figure out sometimes, uh, AM, PM, but you know, you, you'll, <laughs> catch, you'll catch on eventually. You, uh, <laughs> the roosters crow in the morning, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> I had a long period. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably that's what it was. Uh, okay, if there's anything else to bring up, any committee member, Peter Bevan Baker. Yeah, I have a few things I'd, I'd like us to consider. If, I want to go back to the forests um, for firstly, and I, I could be mistaken on this, but I think I had asked for Jean-Paul Arsenault, the chair of the Forestry Commission, to, yes. to come in um, to talk about two things. Since then, the uh, state of the forest report has been issued, and there's a lot to talk about there, um, but also his commission uh, have released their interim report right. with a bunch of recommendations. So I'd like Jean-Paul Arsenault, um, and perhaps he would like to bring members of his commission as well, but certainly him to come in to talk about forests. That would be the first one. Okay. Uh, committee, any feedback on that? Uh, I will add, just to add in on the one assessment I have, and just even in my own woodlot, is... Uh, they're only getting worse because the, the, we had some significant wind in my area on uh, from the north this time uh, in uh, just before Christmas, I'll say, week before Christmas, and now I've got trees going both ways <laughs> down. So everything is so vulnerable. So what looked like if and if a lot of the assessment was done on aerial photos, that's changed even from just uh, in the months previous. So. So anyway, so I would argue that that would be good to get some more feedback and how uh, accurate the re information even is <laughs> what they, you know, they're post-Fiona. It's worse now, I think. And I, I think my other comment on that also would be is that there's still a significant amount of wood that has not been cleaned up from Fiona within the woods, and that's really rapidly deteriorating in this ability for any use for anything. So uh, we've got to try to figure that out and what risks and hazards that's going to be. So, Anyway, uh, Carla, you had something? Yeah, um, I was going to see if we could get on the list the, the Hermanville windmills, uh, look at getting perhaps the PEI Energy Corps in, because we, we don't know, have a lot of inf information about the contract signed on who's responsible for, for the maintenance and for um, the costs there, and perhaps having the company themselves in. Um, Nordex. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, any feedback? 
Nobody's against that, I guess, is what I'm what saying. So maybe we can draft a letter to uh, invite them into a, a meeting and uh, try to get some dates to squeeze that in. So once again, we want to be a little bit limiting here to uh, how much we can do. So we, we don't I have a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, thanks, <laughs> thanks for doing that. Adding it on and then, then taking it off is helpful. Uh, okay, uh, and Peter Bevenbaker? Yeah, I have a few other. Oh, well, uh, Dad. I don't know if you want to. Keep going around, or if anybody else has. Well, nobody else has raised their hand, okay. so you're, you've got the floor. So I'd like to talk about Point de Roche. A lot has happened there in the recent past, and that falls under the purview of this committee for sure. Um, I think it's a uh, few people I'd like to see in. I think we need some representatives from two departments from the Department of, well, it used to be Ag and Land, but it's now Housing, Communities and Land, but it's the land. Uh, the land uh, portion of that department I would like to, to see come in. And there were some individuals who were involved in the original permitting of the property there, and that permit, as I understand it, although this is one of the questions I would like posed to the folks when they come in, is that that permit has been transferred over to the new owner, Tim Banks. So I would like uh, folks from the, the land department in here, and also from the environment department, because they are also involved in the permitting, were involved and are involved in the permitting and the transfer of that permit to the new owner. I would also like to have representatives from the PEI School of Climate Change and Adaptation come in. They've written the um, State of the Coast report recently, which has some implications for uh, decision makers and transference of permits and setbacks and all kinds of things related to exactly what's going on in Pointe de Roche. So I'd like uh, representatives from uh, the PEI School of Climate Change to come in as well. Okay, we have some suggestions of, uh, on, a, on a fairly large issue, I guess, in that regard. Um, any feedback from any committee members? Uh, Zach Bell? Yeah, I agree with, uh, with Peter on that. I'm wondering, and I know this is probably going to become a little bit, but would we ever invite the new developer of the project in to hear his thoughts on Point de Roche. Tim Banks. Anything's possible, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like, yeah. Peter Bevenbaker? Uh, I'm just wondering what you would hope to glean from a conversation with Mr. Banks at this point. Well, I, I thought of that as well and decided I'm not sure how appropriate that is, but maybe I missed something. No, just Chair. Chair uh, Zach Bell. I would say just to hear, like, you know, he has been interviewed on CBC on this before, and he didn't say exactly what his plans are for the project as it stands right now, if he's going to continue on with it or not. You know, I don't think that Tim Banks is scared to speak about what is on his mind. Um, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. If we are going to hear from all the other groups, you know, it's like, because I don't think there was ever a possibility of hearing from the previous landowner in that area. You know, I just know that you know Tim is here, and I guarantee if you ask him, he might come. And if he, if you ask him, he doesn't come. He doesn't come. Yeah. Just an idea for the committee. Chair Peter Bevenbaker. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I mean, my concern here has always been not with the property holder or developer and the, the ra previous owners, the Rashes, or in this case Tim Banks. It's been with the processes and the permitting of government. That's where, and given that we're a legislative committee looking at the processes of government, I, I think that's where our focus should be. I never had any issue with the rashes personally. Uh, I don't think they did anything beyond what government was willing to permit them to do and give them the, the legal permits to, to do that. So my, I think we should remain focused on the government processes which allowed this to happen and are apparently allowing it to continue to happen. Any other feedback? Um, yeah, well, as, as chair, I sort of agree a bit with you, Peter, in that respect that, you know, I don't see where the landowner did anything wrong either. I mean, in, in the, they, they apply for permits, they get approved for permits or denied permits, whatever that did. So it's the, if, if we have an issue with it, uh, then uh, it's the, the whole process uh, to uh, determine that, I guess, uh, and how that got to the point that it got. Um, so, yeah, so... Any thoughts? I mean, we can we can take it to a vote here if we want, or what have you. But 
my leanings would be to say let's reach out to those uh, those organizations and if we see that uh, there's something uh, a little bit awry with the, the applicants of the permits <laughs> then then you have something to sort of say why why would we bring in the, the landowner it makes some sense at that point I just don't know about right now but Okay, everybody agree? Uh, uh, help me find Landowner, I guess the question is, what is his going forward? What is he going to do with the property? But anyway. Yeah. Uh, Hal Perry? Yeah, I thought about, so that's really not anything to do with the capacity yeah. of this committee. So what anybody does or what their intentions are until some time as um, something, a decision is made. Um, but at this point, I don't think we have any business asking anyone to come in to say, what are you going to do for this land? Mm -hmm. so that's just my thought. I, I guess I'll weigh into it. I think it's been already stated that the, the new owner has said he's using it as a private residence. I don't know for himself, but a private residence for someone anyway. And uh, I think maybe the impression is it's for himself, but it, it could be for somebody else. But that's, that's my understanding. So a private residence, I don't know how much yeah. more we'd need to find out than that at this point. And I guess if he was changing the use of it to a commercial business, then he has to go through a permitting process to change the use of the land to do that. So so I guess I, I would say based on the discussion that we've had here, it's really about uh, simply just uh, asking the departments for some uh, response to how this has gotten to where it's at and uh, see what feedback we get. And if they're willing to come in and present, that's all the better. So everybody... Satisfied with that? Okay, so it sounds like we're going to have a rather busy <laughs> spring as well. Oh, no, Peter. Oh, Peter, I'm begging more. Well, <laughs> well, we can't go by letters there, so don't, that's all. No, right. I think perhaps less contentious potentially than the previous one I brought up. But um, we, we had a, a discussion in the last sitting on trapping and snaring here in a report brought forward by Pierre Dow. Um, but there are folks in the community who feel that they would like to be a part of that conversation. They, I submitted a petition here in the House the same day that the report was that came out. And uh, so I would, I would like that, the discussion on this to, to, uh, for those folks to have an opportunity to be on the record. So there, there is a group here who brought forward the petition and I think they have sub, subject matter experts that they would also like to come in to talk about trapping and snaring. Uh, both specifically about here on PEI, but more generally as well. So okay. I'd like that issue to be brought forward. And I have some names for you as well, Alicia. Some thoughts on that one, committee? I know I'm still getting a lot of emails from pro and con on that one. Yeah, <laughs> same. So, yeah, should, uh, Hal so Perry? I think it should be balanced out with someone from representing the Trappers Association. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, just to balance Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And perhaps Pierre Daou as well, uh, who wrote the, the report. Okay. Um, just as a quick, okay, Hilton McLaren. The Federation of Agriculture be interested. Mm -hmm. Federation of Agriculture too. Uh, well, can, you're right. It has an impact on on them as well. Coyotes as an example. Um, so that could be some other. Now, once again, we may be able to look at. Just I'll add this question. Out. Maybe Peter, you might know this one is. Uh, so when I think the minister had said that they were doing a review. Do you know when they're planning on presenting or finalizing their? decision making on after that review. I guess why I'm asking that is is that we want to be before that, I would assume sure. in our, <laughs> our feedback. So I, I, it, it, I appreciate the logic behind yeah. that chair and support it hundred percent. No, there was no timeline that the minister said when, when he brought the report forward to the House. So right. I don't know. Um, any well, any of the government members know anything more about that? No, I guess you could write their phones. Yeah, maybe that would be one part of it. Uh, so, okay. Um, so, any, we want to add that to a, once again a sitting where we want to add this in, or can we get any of this information back by letter form? I, I would think this is going to be a fairly significant uh, feedback would be provided yeah. from a committee or to our committee by those for and against the subject. So. Yeah. So, I, I don't know that. In it's, person, it's a, I'm thinking in person, chair, given the. Yeah complexity of the issue and the yeah it's a big issue okay I, I might have missed it but did you name an organization in the beginning there no there were just some individuals who put together the petition they may have a name for their organization I don't know that off the top of my head Alicia okay and we do have the PEI Hunters and Trappers Association they they are an organization yep. and uh, they have uh, 
committee people, as well as watersheds and the Federation of Agriculture, are all also uh, organizations out there that would have uh, feedback. Yeah, well, the PI Alliance of Watersheds. I would think that one's going to be a day or two of meetings, of worth of meetings, so just be prepared for that. <laughs> and if the committee would like to prioritize the bill that was referred, I can focus on those meetings. And if there is less of a necessary like rush on these meetings, they can go past the sitting maybe, unless there's um, an appetite to have perhaps multiple meetings a week. Sure. I'm, I'm fine with your suggestion. Okay. Chair, Chair Peter Bevenbeck. I do have one final topic, oh. and it's related, but... but different from this, glue traps. Those who may be familiar with them are actually included in Pierre Dow's report. Okay. Um, but there, there's growing concerns, again, not just here on PEI, but across the country and around the world about the inhumanity of glue traps. Um, and uh, no jurisdiction Canada has yet banned them, but many places are talking about that. These are traps to, <laughs> yeah. to, for rodents and things like that, but there's all kinds of issues with them. Um, and there are some people here on PEI who are fairly well versed in this and leaders in the field. So um, there's folks at the ABC, uh, the PEI Veterinary Association, and a specific individual, Feet to Be, who is with Nature PEI, Nature Trust, maybe. I'm not exactly sure about that. Anyway, all of them have a lot to say on this issue, so I would, I would like that to also be on the work plan. I might suggest on the group maybe that's something we could get them to just provide something in writing with the sure. kind of for or against it versus, I mean, it, it certainly could, if we got Pierre Dau in for the trapping, I mean, it, it's yeah. easy to ask that question to him while he's sure. here, of course, but uh, um, that's one that we may be able to try to re reduce our workload a little bit here. <laughs> okay, anything else? Uh, so that concludes your, your list. Oh, there's more? Not even anything dental. Oh, no, gee, I'm good, not. okay. <laughs> Um, so, okay, do we want to, anything you want to do around the priorities of some of those particular topics? Uh, I know for me, I would probably say the trapping and snaring is probably one that's more appropriate, just, and we're also in a little tighter timelines knowing that the minister has uh, uh, got a report or going to make a decision on it in the near future. So uh, that one might be one for me anyway. But maybe. Peter? I would agree with that and appreciate that um, advocacy chair, but I would also say point to Roche because of the nature it was the Guardian sure. story of the year. So it's not, you know, it's been an ongoing issue for a very long time and a lot has changed recently, which has not been discussed at all at a legislative level. So uh, I would appreciate that being bumped up the priority list. Any uh, Zach Bell? Just a, a question for you, Chair, because again, I'm going back to you, uh, with your bill, like, was there a, well, like, well, just well, because it, it was, and maybe yeah. this is just more of the procedural part of it, because it was referred to committee, does it, it have to trump everything or no? Well, I guess my opinion is that the legislature mandated us to review that issue. Right? So I would look at it as our number one issue, number two would be okay. probably trapping and snaring, and Okay. Three, if there's another one, if it's Point de Roche, if everybody's in agreement to that one, we can get into into the details a little more on those. And like I say, like the other ones that we got with the uh, farm and food care and others, those are, yeah. you know, we're trying to squeeze them in where we can. Okay. But uh, I would hope thanks our committee sets, sets the priorities here ultimately. But uh, thanks for the no, knowing that the legislature is who we report to <laughs> and who we advise it would be up to incumbent upon us to try to report back to them before the, the sitting, so, which isn't that far away. <laughs> so you might want to book your Thursdays out for sure in the mornings and see where that goes. So, uh, so are we in agreement to those as uh, one, two, three? Yeah. What and were the topics, sorry? The like the Farm Vendors Act, number one. Number two, trapping and snaring. Number three, Point de Roche. And then we've got the State of the Forestry and Hermanville as uh, four or five, if we want to go to that ex that extent. Yeah. Yeah, it's I'm a lot of I stuff. Like forestry. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd probably be saying forestry, too. But Everybody? Peter Bevan Baker? Can I just check that uh, currently, and I, the, I think the note that you sent around to members yesterday or the day before, Alicia said we only actually have one active issue on our work plan currently. So uh, I, I'm just thinking some of these may be 
I mean, maybe folks will put their hand up and say, yeah, I can be here next Thursday, no problem. But mm -hmm. uh, it could be that you know, somebody here, even if it's one of the lower priority issues, may be the only ones available next Thursday. Oh, so I would say yeah. first come, first served in, in that respect. Yeah. Well, I think Alicia needs a bit of guidance to where to mm -hmm. kind of try, to, <laughs> try to Absolutely. look at what our priorities are and to try to see what. But you're right. If, if there's a date that doesn't work for anybody else and number five is the one that we can bring in mm -hmm. uh, okay. as our priority issues, then you, by just all means. Yeah. That to be said. Thanks. So, but that's the challenge that she has and, <laughs> and as chair to try to uh, <laughs> coordinate this. So we have wishes and wants as a committee, but we still have to try to... Uh, deal with the reality of schedules and uh, mm. all the things that go with that so um, and just on that note um, I had mentioned in that email that went out that a written uh, reply had been sent in lieu of a presentation just with scheduling conflicts is that um, suitable for the committee to accept as kind of checked off the work plan as far as that correspondence received or is, are we still looking for a, a briefing on that uh, and on, is that on a particular subject? Um, it was the. Let me just pull it up. See, I, I would look at this. If we were looking at the say trapping and snaring as a, as the subject, we we have a, a date and we have some people come in. But but maybe the watershed alliance says that, you know, we can't make it. But here's a written submission mm -hmm. to what our thoughts are on on uh, trapping and snaring. We're either for it or against it, or certain under certain circumstances. So it gives us at least a little bit of leeway where we can get some information back and the committee gets a chance to at least understand what in either writing or verbally what their view mm -hmm. is on the subject, right? So, uh, Zach Bell? I learned that very early on when I was elected that a, you know, you, you, a written submission does almost, I, I won't say the exact same thing, but it's good because if you don't feel that you have enough information from a written submission, then you can always follow back That's right. in person. That's and right. again, I'm always cognitive of timelines. Yeah. And again, yeah. we're five weeks out to the planning week, right? So, yeah. so I, I know you and the clerk will do an amazing job. I have everything scheduled. Every conference in the clerk. I don't know what the chair. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, so everybody's kind of in agreement of that uh, scheduling. And, and we'll just say uh, forestry and Hermanville are kind of like four or five, either one. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Do we have a motion for adjournment? Zach Bell. Thank you, everyone.